Well, I'm taking a trip on another desert road here, lonely desert road. I had a couple days, so I decided to head out to the desert. This is Summit Road off of Highway 10, Southern California. It's gonna take me to, hopefully, in about 11 miles, take me to the beginning of the Bradshaw Trail, or the beginning of the Bradshaw Trail off of Summit Road. I work three days on and four days off. My trips to Southern California consist of one day of driving there, two days of recreating, and one day of driving back home. I made it to the rest area near Palm Springs and spent the night camped amongst palm trees. Tomorrow, I'll be driving the Bradshaw Trail to Wiley Wells Campground. There, I will meet some friends that will introduce me to rock hounding. I stopped in Palm Springs so I could visit the BLM office there and pick up some maps. The GPS is great, but the BLM has hard to find maps that help planning trips. They also serve as a great backup if your GPS fails. Continued east on Highway 10 to the Red Cloud exit, so called because you can get to the Red Cloud mine there. There's a network of roads throughout the desert one called Summit Road connects to the Bradshaw Trail after about 11 miles. The Bureau of Land Management has placed a pretty informative kiosk with a nice detailed map here at the trailhead. I had a couple days so I decided to head out to the desert, take a trip, but I'm on a road called Summit Road and I'm heading to the entrance to, the, to where it intersects with the Bradshaw Trail which is a, a scenic byway. I'll be trying to find that Bradshaw Trail and take it all the way to, to Wiley Wells Campground. I'll be meeting up with a friend. It's about 70 miles through the desert. I think it's a pretty well-traveled road. A lot nicer than driving on Highway 10 to get to Blythe. A few miles here, I'll be reaching the intersection of the Bradshaw Trail, getting some desert scenery and we'll see what it's like. I didn't air the tires down yet. It's always a little tougher when you're you're somewhere for the first time and you're just learning your way around for the first time. After I do this, I'll be able to come back and, and I'll know my way around and I'll have a much more, you might call it, efficient trip. I stopped to air the tires down to 18 PSI using my handy air down tool. If you don't know, airing down is important off-road for traction and to soften out the bumps. A softer tire can also aid in preventing punctures from sharp rocks or hunks of sharp metal sticking out of the road like you see here. When you air the tires down, the lugs on the side of the tire aid in traction when you're going through ruts or through muddy conditions. Summit Road intersects the Bradshaw Trail after about 11 miles. It crosses a bunch of desert washes. On this day they are dry. This was the largest wash I encountered on the entire trip this day. Any stock Jeep could have easily made it. See if you can spot the mistake I made. The loud boom is a dead giveaway. Leave your answer in the comments if you notice it. It's not the first time I've done it, but I hope it'll be the last. Of course, driving through here would be a whole different ball game if it had been raining and there was water flowing through these washes. One thing I find overlanding in the desert is there are always many trails to choose from. Summit Road happens to have a road built on that berm that you see to the left as well as tracks heading up washes. This route is well traveled and there is some type of work going on off the Bradshaw Trail in the desert. I saw quite a few work trucks driving the opposite way on top of that berm and I was passed by several overlanding rigs on the Summit Road Trail. 
You can see my Wrangler EcoDiesel tows the X-Venture XV3 trailer very easily. The trailer has no problem following the Jeep wherever it goes with its articulating hitch. If you're interested in the hitch, how to install it, how it operates, I have a video that covers it pretty well on Muddy Ruts YouTube. Here's a good view of that road that parallels Summit. If you take that road, it goes over the washes instead of through them. After about 11 miles, I reached the Bradshaw Trail. There's also a sign for the Chuckwalla Bench. I won't try to explain what the Chuckwalla Bench is, but to say it's a very scenic area and deserves better explanation than I can do in this video. The official name of the Bradshaw Trail is actually the Bradshaw Trail National Backcountry Byway. Apparently I got the idea that there's some kind of struggle between developers and folks who want to name this area a scenic area, a national scenic area. I'm not really up on it, but it's something to check out. The desert scenery and plants are awesome on this trail. To the south lie the Chocolate Mountains. This area is also a bombing range for the military. Signs on the south side of the road warn visitors not to enter because of the potential for encountering unexploded ordnance. Definitely stay out if you go there. Unexploded ordnance can ruin your day. I took a good look around, headed back to my Jeep, jumped in, and continued to head east towards the campground. Looking to the north, you can see the mountains of the Chuckwalla Wilderness. It's a huge wilderness area that borders Joshua Tree to the northwest, and I believe it includes Eagle Mountain. If you have never taken an overlanding trip to the desert, it might seem dry and barren. It's actually rugged and beautiful. Something I only learned a few years ago when my wife talked me into visiting Death Valley for the first time. Since then, I've been a desert lover, but only in the winter months. I definitely avoid the hotter areas overlanding in the summer and the very cold ones in the winter. One of the things about living here in California is you can always find a moderate climate somewhere in the state. But don't let that fool you. It can definitely get cold. After a few miles on the Bradshaw Trail, there's a sign warning to be prepared. The sand does get deeper, but the trail is still pretty easy. It's pretty remote past this point. Definitely be geared up for going out this far. I'm here in the winter. The danger rises exponentially in the heat of summer. Along the way, I saw this nice flat spot that would make a great camp. Since the sun was setting lower, I considered it, but I needed to get to Wiley Wells Campground. Next day, I would be meeting friends there and learn about rock hounding. I also got some aerial footage here. If you're enjoying the video or find it useful, please consider hitting that subscribe button, like, and comment. I definitely appreciate your support in helping to grow this channel.
This whole area has a rich history of being used by the military for training and others for activities like mining. It was a stagecoach road at one time. I don't know what was built here, but it would be interesting to know, and maybe I'll do some research and find out for myself. Or if you know and you see the video, let everybody else know in the comments. Thanks. The BLM kiosk has a list of roads you can explore off the Bradshaw Trail. As you drive along, you'll see trail markers and BLM kiosks designating the trailheads. The markers also indicate how difficult the trails are. The trail ratings I saw were easiest, more difficult, most difficult, and extreme difficulty. Definitely lots of opportunities to challenge your off-road rig and yourself. A great idea is to have at least one more vehicle along in case of trouble, especially on the harder trails. One of the roads off of Bradshaw Trail takes you to Corn Springs. We stayed there once and I have a video up on Muddy Ruts YouTube. It has petroglyphs and an old mining cabin. It's pretty interesting. There was gold in these hills and probably still is if you know where to look. And that's a whole different kind of adventure. But that sounds interesting. I continue heading east, still enjoying the scenery as the sun set. The hills became a beautiful reddish color and the temperature began to fall. And although I had quite a few miles to go, I stopped to take in the view and the sunset. Camp would be reached in the dark, but that's pretty typical for me. Today, my off-road lights would pay for themselves. This video is really part one of a two-day adventure. Part two will be my day of rock hounding. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Remember, the best is yet to come, and I'll see you on the next one.